Industry television company Western Armenia represent the most important news for today. Good day. Today's broadcast. Regular session of the National Assembly of the Republic of Western Armenia. Two-year program aimed at the strengthening their social rights of forcibly displaced citizens from Artsakh. Arayi Kaitsunyan's interview may cause serious consequences. Gerdman Shirvan Nahijevan Pan Armenian Union Statement. Islamized Armenians. Armenian Identity. Ojalan is the symbol of the freedom of Kurdish people. The presentation of the author's book of the famous Kurdish figure took place. On March 13, on the online platform, the regular session of the first convocation of the National Assembly of Western Armenia took place. During the session, the first president of Western Armenia, Mr. Armena Gabrihamyan, made an opening speech. He congratulated the citizens of Western Armenia and the native Armenian population on upcoming New Year of Western Armenia, which begins on March 21. The session was continued by Ms. Nelly Hayatunyan, the Speaker of the National Assembly, who presented the addition to the internal regulation of the National Assembly, which were approved by the deputies. The current topic was Elma Atta's declaration, which started with questions and answers with Armina Gabrahamian and the deputies and went on to a very active discussion. A number of current and agenda issues were also discussed. The Deputy Minister of Education, Science, Culture and Sports of Eastern Armenia, Artur Martirosyan, received the delegation led by Maxim Longe, acting head of the Yerevan Office of the Council of Europe. Maxim Longe, acting head of the Yerevan Office of the Council of Europe, thanked for the reception. Maxim Longe informed that the goal of two-year program strengthening the human rights of the social sphere in Eastern Armenia is to support Eastern Armenia in the direction of solving the problems related to citizens and vulnerable groups forcibly displaced from Artsakh. During the meeting, the parties also discussed the possibility of implementing short-term educational programs, trainings, and other programs in the context of additional and continuous education. Margarita Galastan, coordinator of the European Union Secretariat, was also pre present at the meeting. The interview given by Arai Kayatunyan, who is imprisoned in Baku, to the Baku mass media caused serious concern in Artsakh political circuit. They believe that Aliyev's regime under threat forced him to make statements that could cause serious consequences for Armenia and the Armenian people. For example, official Baku, based on some words of the former president of Artsakh, may try to have Armenian recognized as an aggressor, as responsible for wars in Artsakh and liberating lands. It should be noted that the announcement of the interview was published a few days ago. The interview will be shown fully on March 28. Guardman Shirvan Nahijevan Pan Armenian Union in a statement referred to the 32nd anniversary of Baku's membership in the United Nations, noting that although the criteria for admission to the United Nations require that member states strictly follow the United Nations Charter and the United Nations to all accepted conventions and decisions, however, Baku did not dare to radically violate them in its actions. The announcement also states, particularly Article 33 of Chapter 6 of the United Nations Charter stipulates that the parties to the dispute of its continuation may threaten international peace and security should first of all seek to resolve it through negotiations and other peaceful means. During the last decades, Baku, who has developed a belligerent and hostile rhetoric, the practical expression of which was the instigation of the first Artsakh war, as well as periodic border escalations after the ceasefire, the four-day war in 2016, the 44-day war in 2020, the war on September 1920, 2023. In three decades, Baku has unleashed free wars, abandoning the peace negotiation process, increasing the military budget and armament volumes, developing an aggressive Spanish rhetoric and not even hiding its convictions regarding the war as a political mission. This behavior of Baku and uncontrollable contempt for international law and the structures and bodies that support it creates a deep gap between the possibilities of realizing international law and the current realities which on the one hand weakens the foundation of international legal system created by global wars and on the other hand creates precedents of permissibility for the future hanging the democles of sword of non-existence both for our region and the whole world on world peace and stability as well. We call on international institutions to be vigilant about the applications of the rules they set and to launch appropriate filtering mechanics to distinguish between the current benefit and the long-term values. The forced Islamization and Turkifications of children of non-Muslim nations had its deep roots in the Ottoman Empire. Evidence shows that this policy was applied until the fall of the Ottoman Empire. 
children have always been considered suitable targets for religious conversion who were Islamized at an early age could more easily erase the national and religious self-consciousness that had not yet been formed. It was with this logic that the institution of child recruitment, which was very popular in the Ottoman Empire and was used for many centuries also had the name blood tax. During the conscription, young male children were collected from the non-Muslim population of the empire, given religious and military education, and it was from there that the Janissary regiments were formed. During the year of genocide against Armenians, many cases of mass Islamization of Armenian children by the state and Muslim society were recorded. Moreover, there was in fact an agreement based on mutual interest between the state and the society. The great Armenian lover and humanist Fridjof Nansen, referring to the issues of forced religious conversion of Armenians, says, the number of people who converted to Islam and uh, were circumcised was large, especially children who were caught by the authority. Hamshanism, according to Christian and Muslim Hamshans, in recent years, the communication and cultural connection between Muslim and Christian Armenians has increased. Christian Hamshan visit both Hopa and Hamshan, and from our region they go to Sukhumi, Sochi, Krasnodar, and Moscow and establish contacts with the Christian Hamshan there. In 2008, the year one concert of the music group in Vova Music Group in July can probably be considered the first cultural connection. During the concert organized as part of the Hamshan Culture Week, we had the opportunity to listen to Hamshan folk dance from Abkhazia. As experiments have shown already, apart from religion, we have the same characteristics from the point of view of culture. However, for the Muslim Hamshans, Hamshanism has become an identity. When people from Hamshan say that they are from Hamshans, they are not emphasizing geography, but they emphasize belonging. Hamshanism has a function that distinguishes them from other people living in the region. So why does the Armenian community, after accepting Islam, define itself not as Muslim Armenians, but as a new identity, Hamshanism? We can give the answer to this question only after we understand how Armenians perceive Armenian identity and what Armenian identity means in the system of Ottoman nations. Today we can say that an approach has started to uh, spread according to which the Armenian identity is not defined in the religious axis, but still the perception of the Armenian identity in the religion is very strong. Looking at today's situation, I think it is understandable that when Hamshan Armenians converted to Islam, religion was much more influential. Turning to the perception of the Ottomans, we can say that the same situation should be looked at from the opposite side. According to the millet system used by the Ottomans, each religious society constituted one community, but all the old Sunni groups in the Ottoman Empire were considered one millet, Armenians or otherwise. The minorities and non-Muslims were divided into different millets, not only according to of their creed and religion groups. For example, the Armenians did not form a single nation, they were also part of the Catholic nation and the Protestant nation. Until 19th century, the term millet was never used to describe communities that belonged to the same race, ethnic group or shared language group. With the Tanzimat reform, the term millet was first used particularly then completely to describe peoples. Ojalan is the symbol of the freedom of Kurdish people in Yerevan. The presentation of the first book of famous Kurdish figure took place. Abdullah Okalan's Manifesto of Democratic Civilization, the presentation of the book The Age of Masked Gods and Masked Kings. Poet member of the Union of Kurdish Writers, Sejan Jaladi, stated in his opening speech that Abdullah Okalan's book carefully presented the life and revolutionary activities of the leader of the Kurds, a work that had many reactions and positive op opinions. The publication of the book is a manifestation of gratitude, a deep tribute to the figure who is isolated and in different conditions and in real prison. The work is uh, suitable not only for the Kurdish nation, but also for the whole humanity because the deep philosophical thoughts of our leader can make a great revolution, leading us to a prosperous area. The book summarizes Okela's first step towards a free future. Incidentally, it is presented how he formed the Kurdish Workers' Party and how warriors should receive a brilliant education. Okela touched on many important issues which have not lost their relevance even today, Jaladi said. Incidentally, it is presented how he formed the Kurdish Workers Party and how every warrior should receive a brilliant education. Okala touched in many important issues which have not lost their relevance even today. 
said Jaladi. According to him, reading the book will give an opportunity to get acquainted with many interesting events and declassified realities to know how the Turkish authorities want to destroy the multi-million people nowadays. This was all for today. Goodbye. Oh